Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and give you a quick tutorial on how to create some simple logic in your Torchlight 2 dungeons. I'm using Guts through Steam on Windows 7. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a new mod here, just for the sake of this logic uh, example. Note that I'm not going to go ahead and show you how to do a whole dungeon from scratch or to incorporate the dungeon into Torchlight 2. I'm just going to show you how the logic works. Here's a nice little Guts error I have. You have it, just ignore it won't impact what we're doing. Okay, so to start we're going to want to <clears throat> paint some flooring here on our dungeon. If you don't already have it, I'm just going to create a simple one here for us to work with. Um, move this around here. If you want to copy flooring quickly, you just shift click the items. And uh, if you want to, you can control click multiple items and then shift click it and it'll copy the groups. Um, so here we have all our room pieces. Let's go ahead and create our player start, which will be under logic property node. Here we have player start. Um, if you don't have it selected on the right hand side there, you want to go to properties there. It'll give you the property of all the items we're going to look at here. Uh, so player start, it's all set already automatically. If you want to use it for something else, there's a bunch of other stuff in here, exits, entrances, but we're just going to use player start by default. Let's go ahead and change our snap type so it's easier for to move, move stuff around here. All right, there's our player. Um, to do logic, we're going to need a logic group. That's where pretty much all of our logic is going to happen. Um, let's close this out here so we can see better. So in order to start editing our logic group, uh, you just have logic group edit selected and then click this view external tool that's going to open up our logic editor. This is where we're going to dump all of our logic, but first let's get some logical items in here. Uh, some of our assets. So <clears throat> you can pull in a lot of different things into the logic groups, all kinds of stuff in here. You can see pretty much everything can be incorporated into logic. Um, I'm just going to cover some of those basic frequently used items. Uh, if you have any questions on additional items or want to see anything special, just let me know and I will let you know how it works if you need help with it. But after this, you should be able to just go on on your own. Alright, so the first major item is this unit trigger. Um, unit trigger, the most important thing here on the right side, here on the properties, is a model. Uh, there's a ton of models in here to use as unit triggers. Um, you're just going to have to play around with this and see what you want. Uh, what we're looking for for this example is a simple lever, which is this little switch here. We're going to want to set that switch to loop style. Uh, let's go ahead and set it to back and forth. If you have it set to no, no loop, uh, I believe it's going to get stuck in one position and we're not going to be able to flip it over and over again. So I want to be able to flip it over and over again. So let's just set back and forth as our lever type. Uh, this text here is what's going to show above the lever in game. So let's go ahead and call this level up. Because I'm going to use this lever here to level up our monsters. Um, the rest of the stuff should be okay by default. Let's go ahead and create a spawn group for our monsters. So under logic, you have unit spawner, which is this little green circle. And down here at the bottom, you can play with all this stuff if you want, but we're interested in the monsters here. Let's choose monsters. I'm going to go ahead and set this to spawn class and choose some monsters. Let's see here. Let's choose some Act 4 monsters. Um, if you don't know the difference, monsters is unique monsters. Each monster individually spawn classes are preset uh, groups of spawns for it to select, or group of monsters for it to select from. Uh, let's set our count to 1, so this is the number of monsters that's going to spawn at once. Um, so I only want to spawn one monster for this example. Another thing we want to change is the spawn on create. The spawn on create is set to true right now. We want to set it, to set it to false. That means that when we start playing the game, uh, it's not going to spawn a monster until we tell it to do so with our logic group. Otherwise, if it's set to true, it's just going to spawn it immediately. And we don't want it to do that. Um, if you're ever messing with any of these things on the right here on these properties and you want to know what they do, there's a little description at the bottom that helps you figure out what they do. Um, I think that should be good for this of a monster. Uh, another great thing to use in Logic is a player box trigger. So this is a red box here. Uh, let's stretch it out. What this is going to do is 
create a hitbox for the player so that when the player runs into this box, we're going to be able to tell the game to do something. It's going <clears> to <throat> send out a uh, output in a logic group every time the player runs into this box. Um, unique to the player box trigger, or any player trigger, I believe, is this text uh, field on here. And this is going to be text that appears on screen in big font right in the center of the screen there. So it's a nice little global message. Um, I'm just going to put monster so that when we run into this checks box, it's going to spit up this text of monster on screen. Um, all right, so we have all the basic items that we need. Oh, uh, one last item that we want to put in here to show you is a counter, which comes in handy. Once again, there's tons of stuff in here to play with uh, for pretty much limitless logic. Um, there's our counter. Uh, let's set our counter equal to 2 so that uh, we only have to set our counter up to, and we're going to set it to activate and reset. What this is going to do is uh, when we tell the counter to trigger, it's going to start adding up. We're going to add items into the trigger. The trigger starts at 0. We're gonna hit, when we hit the trigger twice, it's going to count 1, 2, activate, send out an output, and then reset back to 0 so we can count over and over again to 2. And let's drop all these items into our logic group. Alright, so we have counter, our player box, our unit spawner, and our unit trigger. That's all we need. Let's move this uh, unit spawner on the right, some of our inputs here on the left, our counter here in the middle. Uh, when you select each item, you'll see on the left side here, it gives you all the possible inputs and outputs. Most of them you won't need to use. Only a few of them have common use. There's a few of them that have rare use on them. Anyway, so we have our player trigger box. Uh, what we want to use that for uh, in this example is we're going to go ahead and say, hey, every time the player walks into that, um, let's spawn a monster. So we're going to say every time a player walks into that, which is triggered, that will trigger it. Uh, by default, we're going to set the trigger output. And we're going to say unit spawner, go ahead and spawn a unit, that's spawn a monster. And that's based on that value of 1 we gave it earlier. So it's just going to spawn one monster. If we set it to like spawn 10, down in that unit spawner property, it'll spawn 10 when we tell it to spawn these units. Um, Alright, so our little switch that we had there, that lever, let's go ahead and say <clears throat> every time it's triggered by the player, we're going to go ahead and add 1 to our counter. And then when our counter reaches 2, which is activated, we'll go ahead and level up our monster. So we're going to increment the level delta. So lever is triggered, add 1. Then we reach 2, activate, and increment the level of our monster. And there's our basic logic group. So we can go ahead and see that in action. Uh, this is an error unique to me. Don't just ignore that if you have an error. It's... OK, so here we are in our little logic layout. So by default, I have our monster set to level 1, and you can edit that in your spawner properties. So here I am going to walk into our hitbox here. You can see the big monster text. There it spawned a monster. That's a minion. but, but uh, So you can see it right there. It's level 1. I probably should have done something easier, but either way, so there's level 1 monster. Uh, level up. So let's go ahead and flip the switch twice. Now when you run in here, it's going to spawn a monster, and you can see now it's a level 2 monster. Alright, so let's level it up a bunch. Walk in here, and now it's level 6. And there you have it, our basic working logic. Uh, good luck on going through with all your logic uh, Dungeon creation. Let me know if you have any questions, and I will go ahead and answer them the best I can.